Chapter Thirteen. San Gennaro Pensaci tu, Saint Gennaro protect us. Francesco whispered as he crossed himself. Then he and the others turned to see four boys swaggering toward them down the path. One of the boys carried a piglet. Who are they? Dominic whispered as the boys drew closer. The one with the piglet in his arms is Sau Sausage Pirozzi. Francesco said, hurrying to his feet. He is the son of the padrone. Because he can afford to eat so much sausage, he does, and so he has ended up looking like one. He always carries that piglet around to show how rich he is, Salvatore added as he collected his net. He and his cousin, Tullio, the one he's with, think they are better than the rest of us because they eat meat every week. Ugh! What's that smell? Sausage called out. I smell moldy barnyard straw, Tulio retorted. Salvatore took a step forward, his cr face crimson with anger, but Francesco was quick to pull him back. Ignore them, Francesco whispered in his ear. Remember what Father Tommaso told us. Turn your other cheek. You know how Father says that it takes more strength not to fight than to fight. "'Stealing fruit again from my papa's orchard?' Sausage asked, clicking his tongue while giving his piglet a squeeze. "'I think maybe I should send for Signor Randizzi. "'Do you suppose that's what I should do?' "'It was only a few cherries,' Francesco said, trying to reason with him. "'We won't take any more.' "'Once a thief, always a thief. "'It is how you are made,' Sausage retorted. "'Hey, Sausage, tu sei un fungo!' You are made like a mushroom, Salvatore replied. Nello, Sausage, Sausage shouted to a younger boy behind him. Go and fetch Signor Randizzi. Tell him we have visitors in our orchard. Too bad we'll have to miss him, Francesco said with a nervous smile. We were just leaving. He whistled for Violetta and took Antonio by the hand. Salvatore, grab the birds, he whispered. Salvatore picked up the canaries, and Dominic followed behind them as they began walking forward toward the path. But Sausage and his group had spread out, blocking their way. "'Hold your noses, everyone,' Sausage taunted. "'There's a bad stink in the air. And look, they found another bad smell to join them.' Dominic stood frozen, expressionless, the way he always did when kids taunted him. I'd rather smell old Giuseppina's donkey stall, Sausage said, holding his nose. Tulia and the others laughed at this. It is you who smells, Sausage, Salvatore shouted, shouted back. With all that fish oil you rub on those old shoes of yours, everyone can smell you before you come into sight. At least I own a pair of shoes all to myself, Sausage retorted. "'Maybe you should try some fish oil yourselves,' shouted Tulio. "'It might help to cover up the stink. "'Or maybe this will do.' "'With that, he reached down to the ground, "'picked up a dried clump of manure, and threw it their way. Two other boys in their group followed Tulio's lead "'and armed themselves with stones for ammunition. "'Ignore them,' Francesco ordered as they took shelter behind a tree. "'But on hearing another slur... Salvatore spun around and threw a clot of manure, just missing Tulio's arm. As a large stone flew through the air, Salvatore tried to return fire, only to miss his mark once more. Salvatore, Francesco shouted, how many times must I tell you? I know, I know, Salvatore yelled, throwing another clod. Aim for the other cheek! Turn the other cheek! Francesco cried, pulling Antonio behind a bush, not aim for it. Dominic ducked down low with the others as another clod of manure flew over their heads. Suddenly, the sound of donkey bells could be heard coming up the path. Oh no, it's Dominica, Antonio gasped. We must leave now, Francesco exclaimed. But they've blocked the pack path, Salvatore cried. Then we'll just have to make a run for it through the orchard, Francesco shouted. Quick, they're getting away, Sausage yelled as Salvatore and Francesco ran in the other direction. Dominic and Antonio followed behind them. With Violetta at their side and a barrage of stones at their back, the boys raced through the orchard, running as fast as their feet could take them. 
Run, run, Francesco cried. And run they did. They ran straight into the trap set for them, straight into the path of the giant Randizzi. Stop there, a thunderous voice bellowed as Dominic felt his knees begin to buckle.